When we look at our world from space, right, <clears throat> we see ocean and land. There are no lines to dictate any particular country. It's just brown, blues, clouds. Then we have our lines that we have on our maps. It means that someone went to that particular place and said, this is mine, and either took it from whoever it is that they found there or declared that it was theirs. And in declaring that it was theirs, they also were prepared to defend it and were able to defend it and establish rules that governed their land. But each of those lines were drawn with blood. And when you look at the history of America, you think about those individuals that came over on the Mayflower. When they came over, they were leaving a pretty developed Europe at the time, technologically. Infrastructure that was advanced by you know, the world standards at that time. And then they get here to meet the Indians who they may have considered the way of their, you know, the way that they were living to be primitive, but they wanted their land. Now, these individuals were the same individuals who were oppressed by their king and other parts of Europe and wanted their own freedom to be able to exercise, you know, what it is that they believed and that's how we have America. So they come, they take the land, and with blood, they killed off the Indians that live here and pushed them into the far regions of America and did the things that they felt were necessary in order to establish and to realize their manifest destiny. Those people that came over had a vision for what their country should be like and what they wanted it to look like. And so they needed people to help them to do that. So then they went and they brought slaves, black people, now, when those black people were brought here, it wasn't their land. They were brought as slaves. They were brought as a resource for the development of a country that wasn't theirs. And they instructed the blacks to build the country in the way that they thought it should be built based on what they came from, using the technology and the advances and the knowledge that they had. So if I take an example of a house and uh, I'm building a house and someone goes and they take a piece of land and they say that it's theirs and they claim it. And they bring in people to build a house on that land. Those people may build that house and they may be the workforce that are following the instructions of the ones that own the land that's telling them to build the house a particular way. But when that house is built, I don't believe that those people that help to build the house own it. They don't see it that way. And we get to a point where it's now morally inconvenient for those people who've now built their country to have you as a slave and to force you to work and to build without compensating you in any way. So they free you. But because they freed you, does it now mean that you own and have the rights to everything or do they see it that way? And I don't believe so. I believe that they still see you as just a consequence of what they needed to do to develop the country that they call their home here, America. This country wasn't built for black people. <laughs> As a matter of fact, all of the systems that were created for those hundreds of years that they enslaved us, we weren't even considered humans. So whatever systems that they built, they weren't built with our interest in mind. They were probably built very specifically for the purpose of making sure that we stayed in our place and that they could continue to benefit from us as a resource. That inconvenient consequence of having to deal with these leftover workers that they now have in their country that they have built, that house, they may allow you to occupy a room in it, but that room may not necessarily have the same facilities or benefits as the rest of the house. It's not your system. So whatever laws and rules that they have about how you should operate in that house is left to them to decide. They're not gonna look at you as an owner of that land. You don't own the land. You don't own the house. And so now they're going to deal with you however they feel like they need to deal with you. Let's just say the house that they build has air conditioning and running water and electricity and it has, you know, Wi-Fi, right? It has all the benefits that we want to be able to, to live with. But in your part that they give you, you now feel uncomfortable because you see the facilities that they live in, all these benefits that they have and the comforts that they're experiencing, right? Your, your place doesn't have windows, it doesn't have AC, there's no fan. As a matter of fact, the ground isn't, isn't even paved. 
you go, you ask, when you ask the first time, it's like, leave us alone, right? You have no right to kind of, no way, no resources, no power to be able to go do anything about it. So you're left at there when it's convenient for them. So you protest and make it inconvenient for them or make them uncomfortable. They finally say, okay, okay, finally, we'll pave the floor. So they pave the floor and give you concrete. So you're happy with the concrete for a moment until you realize you want windows. You protest for windows, they give you the windows. You protest for AC, they give you a fan. <laughs> and so you're making these very small progresses, but each time they make your accommodations better, they're never making your accommodations good enough so that it's just like their accommodations. And even if they do, they go and they make these accommodations to be exactly the same as how it is for them, it's still not your house. If you want to make a change to that house, you still have to go to them to make a change. And that's the position that black people are in because you don't own the country. They will, don't see it that way. And the reason I say, use the word they, is because the ones who built the country, those white people that built what it is that they have today, even when you were free and they felt like, okay, you have a room now that you built and you're starting to make your room as comfortable as theirs and they're still not looking at you the same way because instilled in them for over 400 years and all of their ancestors have been taught that blacks are not like us. They don't own this land and they were brought here for this purpose. We're not that very far removed from slavery. It's a hundred and something years ago. That mindset of the whites who own the land and built their country still think about their country in the exact same way. When this country was founded, the Declaration of Independence were signed, was signed by slave owners. Black people weren't even human. We were three-fifths of a man. The Constitution was signed by slave owners. All those laws that were created in the Constitution that we hold so dearly and so strongly to right now, and with all its very uplifting morality, wasn't talking about us, <laughs> black people. It's talking about those people that they saw as humans. And so all the systems and all the institutional racism that we talk about today is a part of the fabric and foundation of when this country was actually created. In order for that to change, we have to go all the way back and revisit the foundation of this country where it was deliberately created to keep blacks in a particular place and make those changes. Now, do I think those changes are possible? Yes. But those changes are unlikely, I believe. And I believe those changes will take forever. We continue to be in the house feeling uncomfortable because we're not in our own home. And until we own our own home and be uncomfortable like the ones who left their oppressed kings in Europe, build our own home, make our own rules, create our own systems, and be the ones who dictate whether or not we're gonna have AC in the room or we're gonna, we're gonna have a fan or not. And that is where I believe we should be. It will never be the case where they will give the power to us black people in this country. So Black Lives Matter for me is almost like we're asking for the same people to acknowledge us <laughs> and to literally give us value when they took it from us. Why would they wanna give it to us? And why would they want to give it to us in their house so that we can have power over them? I think that's unlikely. I think we black people have to see that and black Americans more so than anything else have to see that that path forward is creating our own home and being uncomfortable, taking the natural resources, taking the knowledge that we have here, the, the power that we have here and the, the money that we have here and all that those things of value and bring them back home. I think that as blacks in America, we need to make Africa home again. And we need to go back home and go and build our own house.